In this video, I'm going to solve the trig equation. 3 cosine theta minus 1 equals 1.34 in four steps. There's some additional directions that I want to present for this equation. And the first one is that angle theta is an angle between 0 and 2 pi radians. This trig equation, like most trig equations, has an infinite number of solutions. We are only going to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi radians. So angle theta, the unknown angle in this trig equation, will be measured in radians. Additionally, we're going to round to the nearest hundredth of a radian. We'll round our answers to two decimal places. Really, the solutions to this equation are, you know, will be irrational we'll round them to two decimal places. Let's begin. Step one is to isolate the trig function. In this case, the trig function is the cosine of theta, the cosine of our unknown angle. We can perform some pretty basic algebra steps to isolate the cosine of theta. First, we'll add one to both sides of the equation, and 1.34 plus one is 2.34. And that leaves me on the left side of the equation with three times the cosine of theta. And that three can be eliminated from the cosine of theta if I divide both sides of the equation by three. Dividing the left side of the equation by three will eliminate the three in front of cosine of theta. 2.34 divided by three is exactly 0 0.78. The trig function has been isolated. The cosine of theta equals 0 0.78. On to step two. Step two is to identify what two quadrants the solutions are located in. In this trig equation, like most trig equations, there will be two solutions between zero and two pi radians. And the solutions, the quadrants of the two solutions can be determined using this table. Here I have the cosine of theta equals positive 0 0.78. The cosine is positive in the first quadrant, and the cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. The cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant, but here I'm looking at the cosine of an angle theta is equal to positive 0 0.78, so the two quadrants that these solutions will be located in are the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Step two, identify what two quadrants the solutions are in. Well, I've done that. It's quadrant one and quadrant four. Now that I know that my solutions will be in quadrant one and quadrant four, I'm going to use the inverse trig function on the positive version of the number. Here I have the cosine of theta equals 0 0.78. I'm going to do the inverse cosine of 0 0.78. I'm going to be sure that my calculator's in radians. Remember, this angle is measured in radians. The original direction said find your answers between 0 and 2 pi. So with my calculator in radians, I'll do inverse cosine of 0 0.78 and see that that is approximately 0 0.68 radians. This is rounded off to the nearest hundredth. This actual value of the inverse cosine of 0.78 is irrational, goes on forever without ending or repeating, but to two decimal places, the result of step three is 0 0.68. The fourth and final step is to use that reference angle that I found in step three, 0 0.68, to state the two solutions. If we, were, if we remember back to step two, we determined that the two solutions for this trig equation would be located in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. The result of step three is a first quadrant angle. The result of step three will always be a first quadrant angle. And in this case, the first quadrant angle is one of our two solutions. So 0 0.68 is one of the two solutions. The other solution will be located in quadrant four. To find that solution, we'll need to use the reference angle formulas. The reference angle formulas in radians looks like these, looks like this. 
And if our reference angle is 0 0.68, to find the associated fourth quadrant angle, we'll use this part of the reference angle formulas. If you know a reference angle and you want to find the associated fourth quadrant angle, you do 2 pi minus theta, 2 pi minus that angle. So our first solution, like I said, our quadrant one solution is 0 0.68. But to find the fourth quadrant solution, I'm going to have to do 2 pi minus 0 0.68, which is 5.60. The two solutions to our original trig equation are 0 0.68 and 5.60. 0 0.68 and 5.60 are the two solutions. But before we finish, I want to discuss how to check those two answers. We can check our two solutions of 0 0.68 and 5.60 in a similar manner that you can check the solutions to most equations and that's to take those solutions and substitute them back in for the variable in the original equation. Make sure you end up with a true statement. In this case, after we do our two substitutions, take a cosine, multiply by 3, and subtract 1, we should get 1.34, or about 1.34, since we rounded these answers off to the nearest hundredth. Let's first check our quadrant 1 solution. That's done by substituting 0 0.68 for theta, and then taking the cosine of it, multiplying by 3 and subtracting 1. And here I get 1.3327. This is not exactly 1.34, but again, that's because we rounded this solution off to the nearest hundredth. 1.3327 is less than a hundredth off of 1.34. That's within the margin of error that we would need to be confident that 0 0.68 is in fact, at least to the nearest hundredth, a correct solution to this equation. Let's check our quadrant 4 answer, 5.60. Substitute a 5.60 in for theta. 3 times the cosine of 5.60 minus 1 is 1 1.3266. Again, not exactly 1.34, but within the margin of error, close enough for us to be confident that it is, in fact, the second correct solution to our original equation. So, now that we've checked our solutions, we can be confident in saying that between 0 and 2 pi, the two solutions to 3 cosine theta minus 1 equals 1.34, the two solutions for theta are 0 0.68 and 5.60.